The reflection we see in the mirror can be obscured by our inner self-image. My advocacy today is called, You Are Not a Victim. A few weeks ago, I received a video from a contact showing the live map of air traffic around the world. Despite the coronavirus downturn, Europe, Asia, the Americas, and Oceania still looked relatively busy. Africa, on the other hand, was almost completely desolate. Now, according to the voiceover in the video, the near total absence of flight traffic on the African continent was because Africa is being excluded from the global economy. They are excluding Africa. It immediately struck me that this was yet another instance in a growing series of personal observations where I had seen an African economic or political conversation completely sidestep any attempt to engage facts and data, but instead use an emotional appeal to victimhood. The instances varied widely, from the ongoing Ivorian crisis, where some say France is sponsoring the crisis, to insecurity in Nigeria, where some say America is behind it, to even the coronavirus outbreak, where you know, some unspecified they want to depopulate Africa. The common thread running through all of these ideas is that, one, Africa is a victim by default, regardless of whatever crisis is on ground, and two, the explanation for any crisis can always be found in a conspiracy theory as against publicly accessible facts and data. So is Africa really a victim, and are we all simply unfortunate victims of power plays and geopolitical tussles between everyone from world powers to the global banking elite to the Illuminati or Anunnaki or whatever other shadowy group of people allegedly controls the world? To answer, the, to answer that question, we need to examine why there is a widespread belief that Africa is being puppeted and is not actually in control of its own destiny. 60 years after most of the continent gained independence, despite controlling our own borders, education, taxation, money, industrial policy, public investment policy, and military, Africa has barely made any progress at all. The realization that African independence has not delivered the results hoped for in the 1960s is very painful. What would be even more painful, however, is admitting that the independence project and the subsequent post-colonial projects across the continent were in fact selfishly conceived, poorly designed, and terribly executed. Something that, this is the same thing as saying that Africans are not capable of self-rule. The shame of admitting our own historical and continued failure drives people to instead look for a convenient scapegoat that is suitably large and ever-present, yet distant and untouchable. And what better scapegoat is there than the foreign, you know, preferably white, boogeyman? So when we in Nigeria make decisions like refusing to unify our exchange rate or closing our borders despite a land trade surplus or wasting development funds on the succession of nonsensical white elephant projects, we can blame the resulting economic dev devastation and political instability on an external boogeyman, not on ourselves. It's never our fault. Nobody made us self-harm like this, but we can blame everyone except ourselves because accepting responsibility and admitting failure is what will break our political status quo and make us realize that many of our foundational assumptions are simply wrong. Is there actually a boogeyman? Are there people out there that don't mean well for Africa? The answer to that question is not yes or no. The correct answer is, so what? If geopolitical interests that allegedly want Africa to remain poor and underdeveloped could not stop China and India from fixing key systemic issues and building themselves into economic powerhouses, they cannot stop Africa either. We are, in fact, the ones who get to decide what we want our destiny to be. No Bretton Woods financial institution, giant alien lizard, imperialist white devil, or Bill Gates antichrist has the power to do that for us. In fact, if you draw the line back far enough, even back to slavery and colonization, you will discover that at every point, Africans themselves, through our own greed, selfishness, and short-sightedness, and lack of a global perspective, always made the decisions that led to their own downfall like raiding rival settlements and selling captives to European slave buyers who almost never ventured past the coasts. Nobody at any point in time has ever had the power to waltz into Africa and cheerfully turn its one billion people into helpless victims. We are not and have never been that powerless. And the same holds today. You are not a victim. You know, David, I, you know, whilst I agree with you on the importance of self-determination of, of deciding what you want. 
um, because as you've given your own advocacy, you also talked about India and China, and we know what Singapore did right. and what Taiwan did, and what's this country that fought America, Vietnam, and it's now Vietnam is now you know like booming. So we can see that countries can make the leap, um, but I also will want us to recognize that. Um, I, I don't want us to simply just dismiss, even though, yes, as you said again, there's, there was collusion with, you know, amongst us as during the slave uh, period, but I don't want us to dismiss the fact that we, as a, you know, when you are, when you, when you are in Africa, I'll give you an example. If you go to Uganda, there's often this joke that if you finish eating banana and you throw it outside of a window, you might wake up in the morning and see the thing sprout growing. It's that the land is so fertile. And we live at a time, because I remember attending a, a conference a few years ago, many years ago in France, and someone was doing the same kind of, um, and said, you know, I want to show you two things. I want to show you a small village in, a, in the south of France, small village. Okay. Um, and the total economy of that village is this amount of money. Minus school, I want to show you a village in Cameroon with more money, more generals, more multimillionaires, and the village did not have accessible roads. So he says, what? is really the problem. How come this little village with less money and, you know, is better? You can see the pictures of the village, nice roads and everything going for them, you know, public service, post office, restaurants. And, and then this village in Cameroon with people who have more wealth, one person had more wealth than the well, entire village in, in, in this small part of France. So what, so what, what happened? Is it a climate? Is it the, mm -hmm. so I agree with that. But there's a, there's a I, I think my point really is that let's not trivialize <laughs> the role that slavery, whether we let ourselves be enslaved or not. I don't want to be, you, you know, I don't want to follow your argument a bit like the Kanye West's kind of movement and to say, you know, well, we let ourselves be captured. We, from an African perspective, we put, we, we have a consciousness. We're more peaceable. The people who rule the world today, I don't know if you saw Kelichi Okafo's thing on, on, on her channel on Instagram the other day where she talked about violence. People who are more violent succeed more. And we, the example we talked about, peace in Nigeria a few minutes but ago, reflect that. Where, where, where we I need to... to understand that you have power. It's not given. We need to take it. We have been a people because of our climate, because of the way that things grow. Mm. No, okay. I'm saying. Let me come in. Let me come in because of time. I need, to, I need to granted. snatch it from you in a bit. What I'm saying is, why I'm, I'm almost 100% behind him, and I rarely get 100% behind people because there's always one area you won't agree with, is because I think at some point we need to own our own destinies, and that's what it says to me from an individual point of view, from a collective. Even I take back the one I said about, oh, if you're in governance, you know, um, the system is too much. No, I take that one back. Okay. Wherever you find yourself, own it and make. Complete, take pres complete responsibility for your choices there to do your 100% you can. I'm tired of us continually making excuses, climate, whatever. I'm, I'm not interested anymore. We've done that. We've won the T-shirt. It's time to move forward. It's time to now say where we are now, where we don't have these people that are doing well, don't have two heads. Let's take it from here. For, if it's for... citizen engaging the leaders, let's engage. Whatever it is that is the next step from our below power position, we must own it and not look back. We have to look forward. No, I, you I, know, think, I mean, why, how can Live Mohammed think, come and be telling us they didn't sell uh, military equipment? You know, what kind of nonsense are they? I, 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 they I didn't think, sell machinery to us even though we paid for it. I, I, I'm I not think, interested uh, in those excuses. I, I think um, um, <laughs> Emeka simply agrees with David, but just trying to sound a note of warning so that you know, people don't go with the wrong notion of, oh, you tolerate slave trade uh, because after all, we sold ourselves out. But you also forget that at some point, they came with guns and superior fire, firepower, and and so, um, Which and, we then, bought. and then, <laughs> no, 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 and then well, imposed no, certain persons yeah, and created an economic and model created, that made slavery yeah, a business. Imposed certain persons, yeah. you know, some we persons are we were are. made district heads, right. and they had authority, they had the backing of. So, but I don't want to go that that route. I agree with you that um, yes, we at some point will have to accept our fault, own the process. Yeah. Because I agree we are not victim. Um, the superpower, we always want to make you a victim. It is now left for you to say, I will accept to be a victim, exactly. a slave forever. Or I will say, you know what? I won't take this. My I will want now. also grow and look at you face to face. Mm -hmm. Like um, Fessor Skiamu once told me, 
I remember then, you know, he was still at Maryland. He bought um, an SUV. And I said, ah, man, this one is big. We said, yes, sir, because the people are oppressing us are up there. So I want to step up and look them eyeball to <laughs> eyeball. eyeball. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and, and truly, Ozekomen says, Oshoma, budoze your way there, spread your hands and refuse Don't to be apologize. pushed down. Yeah. And it is the same thing. Nigeria need to realize that we need to bulldoze our way up there, spread our hands and refuse to be pushed eye. down. But if you don't, they will continue to look at you down and Precisely. say, look, you are not up here. But, but, you know, you are a baby. David, this is fantastic advocacy. Yeah. Yeah. Really solid. Well, I think it is as well. And I, I just want to say, just as you tell an individual, then you tell a collective, you know, a group of people, you are only a victim for as long as you see yourself as a, a victim. victim. And you can shake, you can break loose from that victim mentality mm -hmm. and say, you know what? I take control from today. I take charge today. And that's the whole essence of my advocacy today and the general advocacy we've had today that mm -hmm. Nigerians can take control and take charge yeah. of their lives and their, and their well-being of their existence. I'm seeing a future existence. for this you know? I'm getting, and, be, I'm and, getting behind my woman. I'm going to get behind my man. I'm getting behind my woman. <laughs> so uh -huh. please take charge. <laughs> please charge her. What's your next move? Let's collaborate. It always feels like a journey on the advocate. However, here's where we come full circle today. The advocacy continues on our social media platforms, on Facebook at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Another rich edition will be coming your way next week, same time. And until then, let's keep advocating for a better society. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.